Dr. Kevin Maloney for St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic. Uh, you're all used to seeing this show. Tonight, I'm very honored to have as our guest uh, the famous director, Ang Lee. Yes, director you are. Ang Lee. Yes, the we, famous. We there's clap. There's, I heard cla clapping in the yeah. background. Uh, Ang is busy working, and he took the time out uh, to do this film for St. Rita's. Uh, Ang and I uh, have been friends for years. And we've been saying we were going to do this for years, and we finally got around to it. Uh, I get lazy with these shows, but I've been doing them lately. So I called Ang, and even though he's about to leave, working on, on a film and off to a location, he said he would do it, and I thank you. That's Ang. Now, I have to do most of Neither one of us... Ang doesn't really like being interviewed, and I don't like doing interviews. I usually do a little intro to this, and then... Nancy we love take you just the same. Exactly. We love you all. <laughs> we say hello to you all. Uh, let me start by telling everybody about St. Rita's Clinic. I no longer say the location on the films so that I don't have to do films any, any longer. Every time we change a location, we have to do new films because throughout the films, we say where you can go to get the free medical care. So in the beginning of the film, they'll be writing, and at the end of the film, they'll be writing where the free medical clinic is every Friday nights at 5.30. Or you can call Nancy or myself at the office after 6 o'clock, please, 381-2091, and we'll tell you where St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic is. For those of you watching for the first time, St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic is, is like any doctor's office, only it's for free, and it's in a, usually in a church hall. We're like a mass unit. We tear it down and build it up every Friday night. I have the luxury of arriving and everything like you on set is set up for me. So I give most of the credit to the volunteers. Yes. <laughs> they, right, and we've spoken about that. They do all the work. You, I remember you, take you all the credit. Yeah. I remember you yes. told me when, yeah. it, when uh, I think Mason, Ang's younger son, visited you on set. He said, what, yeah, did, what he did he was, say uh, to you? He was four years old. Uh, I was shooting Sense Sensibility. And after half a days of observation, honest observation, he came to me and said, how come everybody's working except you? <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, that's the way I am. That's the way I am at St. Rita's. Ang, I leave. I see the patients. I leave, and everybody's working, drawing bloods. Drawing bloods. Well, I, I do very it's little there. It's, it's the, the volunteers. I mean that. Uh, your wife, Jane. Has, has brought in clothing and books and toys into the office. She's been very nice like that. We depend on the community for that. In Westchester, where we give out free used toys, clothing, canned goods every week to these patients. We collect toys all year round. You know what? My holiday party has turned into a zoo. Like 3,000 children. So drop anybody listening, and I know a lot of people watch this because the famous Ang Lee wow. is on. Please. Yes. Please drop off toys. Just not a couple of Oscar, that's all. Just a couple no, of no, Oscars. No, yeah. Nothing no, more. Not nothing <laughs> more. <laughs> we'll get to that soon. I know you know I'm gonna talk about it. I uh, I've asked Ang Ang and I have been friends and I've asked Ang every single question about the Oscar down to what it felt like standing there, and I'm gonna tell you what he told me in a second. Call my office, three eight one two oh nine one, please. Set, bring us toys, okay? We have 3,000 children to fill with armfuls of toys every holiday season. And, and the office is in Mamaroneck on the Boston Post Road, right across the street from Brewer's Hardware. Now, Ang Lee uh, is probably the most modest man I've ever met, and I mean that. I'll never forget when you walked into my office. Of course, before you came in, I told you this, the office was all abuzz that Ang Lee was a patient. And I had never heard of Ang Lee. So, you know, every, I'm hearing Ang Lee, Ang Lee. And then all of a sudden you came in one day and I said, you know, they had told me what films you made. And I, and I remember thanking you for giving us such pleasure. And you very humbly, we gave like the Chinese nod. We very humbly said you're welcome, but then we started. Well, I just love your place. I love Nancy. You know, we live nearby, and unlike the office, you just walk in like like a Chinese uh, doctor place or Taiwanese. I know where I came from. 
you just walk in without a loan. You know, you just sit there, and Nancy will call you, and you're like, that's it. No big yeah. deal. No, no big fancy deal, no. doctor sitting sitting in front of you. That's why we got along. Most of your problem is not really a problem. You don't have to make a big deal. And exactly. I, I like the way you talk. Like it. Like, and that's why Ang and I became I friends. Ang, like we're very style. similar. You're very, <laughs> very, very direct and efficient about the way you go about work, and we've spoken about it. We're very much into our work, the two of us. Yes. We really are. And we've shared that a lot. We both have two sons the same age. We both kind of live for our family outside of our work. Of course, they don't appreciate it, right? Uh, sometimes they do, but they're not verbalized that very much. I don't Most know of the time, you. though. I remember once you called me on Father's Day, and I, I, you said to me, I said to you, how was your Father's Day? And you said, you know, they, gave me, they got up this morning, they gave me a card, said Happy Father's Day, and went on their way. I said, tell me about it. The no same thing here. Yeah. No big deal. That's the life of having boys, right, Ang? But <laughs> uh, also, Ang and I share, well, our wives collect, collect the eggs every day. That's yes, something else. Yeah. You have chickens, too. Yeah. Something odd we share in common. We both eat fresh chickens. Another thing that Jen's we... Chicken. I, don't, I don't deal with chicken. I just eat the eggs. And Paula's chickens, too. I just eat the eggs. Paula <laughs> collects them. Once, actually once recently, she was going to New York and she asked me, can you give them water? It was the first time I'd seen those chickens, I think, in six months. You probably the same, right? Pretty much. Too. Exactly. Except when Jen is traveling, then I have to do more. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And not that, not to, you know, they, they, they collect eggs. They're, they're old-fashioned women, but Jen is a microbiologist, very renowned uh, at a medical college, and Paula is an attorney, but they both collect eggs. So weird, we have these things in common. I, w <laughs> I like to kid Ang's wife, Jane, who really is a renowned microbiologist. And I once, one of your boys was in the office, and I'm so used to lecturing my boys. And I was talking to him about his education. And I said, Jane, you be quiet. You're just a housewife. <laughs> Wanting to see her reaction. A housewife. <laughs> a housewife. I said, come on, Ang is the head of the family. No, uh, no, 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 just like mine. She, she's the leader of the house. She's the leader of the house. Three, just three like, boys listen, we obey. That, exactly. That's how, it, that's how it goes. She yeah. has a third boy, you. Yes. Like Paula says, she has a sixth boy, me. But then I, I, I said, Jane, I'm only kidding. My God, you're a renowned microbiologist. <laughs> and then she left. What else am I going to talk about, Ang? We're here for like a half an hour. Our love of swimming. Little is known that you're quite the athlete. Ang and I, oh yeah, you are, very yeah, modest. Swim, I'll tell you, you're, you're, you're a good athlete. swimmer. You're, you're, it, oh, okay. it, not many people are regular swimmers. Most people jog, most people ride bikes. You know, you had told me you used to swim laps years, years ago. We started hanging out together and swimming about together. A mile, about a mile. And that's like yeah, that's, a, a that's swimming a mile. a mile used to kill me. Like, I'd say, all right, Ang, enough. You always would want to go the mile. Remember? Close to the mile. Yeah. 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 I'm very competitive, my, by the way, I must say. I'd been swimming regularly, and you always wanted you're to go fast, that. You always you're wanted to go that extra five or ten minutes. <laughs> well, we both, we, we signed up. Well, I'll tell you something. I was thinking about it. You're a little braver than me. You weren't brave about the waters in New York. We signed up for a race that I do every year in the Hudson River. And actually, that year, everybody was abuzz thinking Ang Lee was coming. At the end, you probably made the smart decision by not entering the Hudson River water. But I think you're braver than me because recently you got bit by a shark as you were scuba diving. Yes. yes. Um, and it's healing, yeah. It's yeah. a nursing shock. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's a not, shock bite. Did you hear him? Not a big deal. Now, everybody watching, knowing me, and you know if I had been bitten by a shark, Ang, there'd be no stopping me talking about it, right? Right? Wouldn't I be going on and on? Look, I, I get the shark nibble. A, a, a shark bite, yeah. A shark bite. That sounds better. Like, no big deal. <laughs> That's brave. Me, I see a shark, I'm right out of the water. In fact, late, I'm, I'm training you know what for the I race. Was thinking? You know the movie I did, The Hulk? Yes. Because when you're underwater, when you're deep, you can't see red. Oh, God. 
When the blood comes out, it's green. The first thought, th th I'm, I'm the Hulk. I'm the Hulk. I'm the Hulk. Well, you, you, you are. See, there really is a Hulk in all of us, isn't there? Yes. Ang has a philosophy. If I have a Hulk, everybody has a Hulk. Well, it is your philosophy that there's a Hulk within all of us, isn't there? Uh, that's like a cash line. It's well, not really a philosophy. you pointed out the Hulk and me. Ang and I have gotten into arguments from now on, now and again. We're very both strong-minded. And he'll say to me, that's the Hulk in you. You've seen the Hulk in me, haven't you? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Quite a few times. As everybody knows me watching, Ang, I can be a pain in the neck. There is quite a Hulk in me. And if you disagree... <laughs> you're supposed to be Hulk out sometimes. But you're Speaking a of director, you're, I'm having... You're, you're, to you're a doctor. Hulk. You're not supposed to Hulk out. Um, well, I rarely, I rarely, I Hulk out in private and only with people that I trust. And you've seen that Hulk in me many times. Ang and I have had our arguments. I just thought, remember the time you were telling me I shouldn't be driving a pickup truck because I'm wasting fuel in the economy? Yes, yes. And then finally realizing the way I live, and I'm not extravagant the way I live, that you finally said to me, okay, I'll give you, you just you have that one luxury. Remember that? <laughs> That's true. I, I don't, there are a few other things, but. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, we won't talk about those other things. Ang and I know each other very well as you can see. But I uh, never you knew I do here. Yeah. But I, I never knew I'd be like directing you to hold a mic close to your mouth. You're not holding it close to the mouth. I'm telling the famous Ang Lee yeah. director, Academy Award winner, that he has to hold the mic close to his mouth. Uh, uh, What's uh, that uh, all yeah. about? <laughs> You're not used to a handheld mic, are you? You know, you know there's not not much you can do about your doctor, you know. Uh, but his doctor is a pain in the neck. <laughs> I am gonna say it again. This mic has to go near, the, are you all listening? Are all gonna be saying he's right? The, the doctor is telling the director, we can hear the doctor very well, but can't hear Senor Lee very well. Now speak close with that mic. Uh, what should I be speaking? That's good enough. Louder. <laughs> uh, loud. Uh, ah. <laughs> now, no, that's what Ang loves to talk about. Ang, I, you come alive when we talk about. Everybody knows that Ang won the Academy Award for Brokeback Mountain, and of course, when we became friends, we're driving to the Y one night to swim, and of course, my natural question was, so tell me, what was it like? Like, I can't believe you were there. You walked down that red carpet, you know, like when they called your name, <laughs> like you're standing up there and Ang was really honest about it, like any of us would feel. Uh, and I remember thinking, like, you're so real and you really are. This is the real deal here. He's not affected by Hollywood or anything like that. You couldn't believe it. You were looking out, looking at all these major stars, Googling eye up at you and, you couldn't believe you were in that they're position. Like, right, right, yeah, they're like right there looking at you. Smile. Right, right in the smile. Yeah, right. All dressed up and everything. And there you were. I, actually, you you went kind of blank. You know, you just you, worry about your speech. The it, whole world yeah, is watching. That's all you can think. You, you must have yeah, been to dying. me, right, it's not exactly. like dramatic or anything. It's just you just worry about your speech Was a little the bit. Was the heart pumping? I guess so. I yeah. can imagine, I can imagine. Yeah, I, I guess so. I didn't feel it. I was just like, try yeah. to do a good job on the speech. Don't screw this up. Don't look like you know, an idiot. Yeah, don't look like an idiot. The whole world is watching. I'm <laughs> representing the, you know, I'm the first Asian to win this. That's right, congratulations. Yeah, and the whole world is watching. You know, my country in Taiwan, they're watching. You know, I want to be a good example. <laughs> Just speak the slowly whole, and do it fine. That's all you can think of, yeah. The whole world was watching. What do you tell me? Who you like when you go to China? Who I like? No, who are you like? You live pretty anonymously in New York and Westchester. When you're in China, who do you uh, compare yourself to? It depends where, where I am. In the time, oh, He's being modest. Yeah. He's followed all over China by the paparazzi, aren't you? It's not quite Michael Jackson, you know, but, but uh, I'll be Michael mob. Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be mob. People, like, everybody knows me. He's mobbed over there. He's absolutely mobbed. Uh, you know, I, I try to hide out as much as I can. Uh, 
I don't I blame you. Here. I would want to hide out too. You have a luxury here of. We've been together many, many times, and nobody. Here's the thing: they they, they have group whales. And when they see me, they're generally happy. They want to take a photo. Yes. Sometimes give me the eyes, the flashes, and then too much. But they're they're happy. You know. well, when you give people happiness, you're you're happy. So yeah. I do enjoy that. But after three days, I get a little tired. I can imagine. Uh, yeah, for a short period of time, I'm I'm imagine. happy to be there. Yeah. I can remember we were in an Oriental supermarket once, and it's the only one time. Of all the times we've been together and all the places we've been in Westchester, one person came up to you, and I'll never forget the way he said it. Are you Ang Lee? Yeah, they like me. And I remember thinking, he must think I'm the bodyguard. I had a trench coat on. In that. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember, I was saying, Ang is very, very healthy. Very, you eat very, very healthy. You know a lot about foods and a lot about cooking, which I don't. Yeah, when you go to the Chinese supermarket, it, it looked healthy to you, yeah. It was completely healthy to me. In fact, I said, where's the junk food aisle? And you showed me it. And do you remember what I said when uh, I saw uh, the junk a, food aisle? a good tip from, from Jan, who's a microbiologist. Her theory is that eat all you want and, that's, and stay healthy and stay away from it. So you don't need the junk food. But you know I'm a junk food addict. I saw that junk food aisle in the Oriental store, and I said, in my supermarket, this is like healthy food. Where's the real junk food? <laughs> there was none. Like, where's the hostess cream filled cupcakes, the candy, the stuff like that? Zero, none. You were very serious about that food, and showing me the different types, which I didn't understand. I remember getting a little bored, and do you remember what I started doing? I gave you one at the cash register, what we did? What did we do? We were dueling with roots, oh. some long oriental root. I gave you one. I said, come on, crouching tiger. And you got into it. Okay. There's a little kid inside of Ang sometimes. Everybody's looking at us. Like, what are these that two? That plant is called an oxtail. It's That's actually a very healthy food. A, yeah. It'll always a little. A good uh, cleansing it, to your. I've your never food seen food. more healthier food in my life. I wanted to <laughs> run, Ang. You know the way I eat. For, remember the time I gave, you know, the sodas? Remember I said soda isn't bad for you? Yes, you have said that. Do you remember the night we had you the argument? I believe in caffeine. Caffeine, I do believe in. I don't think it's bad for you. He doesn't talk like a doctor, actually. I live on caffeine all day long, loaded with milk and sugar, but I do exercise a lot, don't I? That's true. To an That's excessive true. degree. Yeah. But, Ang. Remember the argument we had? We're sitting in the car, and both, both Ang and I work very hard, and sometimes at the end of the day, it's, it's hard for us to unwind. Swimming, for example, would make us unwind, and I had sodas in the car, and I, I was insisting and in arguing with you that Mountain Dew had no caffeine in it. Do you remember? <laughs> I got an impression Mountain Dew has the highest caffeine of all sodas. I found out later on, as I, I told you the story, I'm laying in bed one night at like 4 a.m. and I'm going, what's wrong? My, everything is perfect. The kids are all great. Like, you know, my life is great. Why can't I sleep? I th Ang, I said to myself, the Mountain Dew. You're right. I looked it up. It has the highest amount of caffeine of any soda that there is. And I was making you down it after a workout, insisting there was no caffeine in it. Oh, God, I, I, you must have wanted to kill me when you got home and you were up all night. Now, to make this interesting, I thought of a funny story. Speaking of the swimming, and when I say Ang is athletic, you're very athletic. You skied with me the first time ice skiing, I called it, remember? Yeah, ice skiing, yeah. It's, yeah. I, it, it's northeast, scary, yeah. northeast, yeah. you know, Pennsylvania, we went skiing, yeah. and it's sheer ice. But I'll tell you, you... I told you exactly what to do, and you did it exactly, and we went down the expert slopes. Remember? Yes. Really, really, really expert slopes, ice for the first time. Followed my direction perfectly, and you're an unbelievably quick learner. What I remember, though, what's outstanding to me about that day is my five sons, usually, I think one son was away at school, four sons were home. Usually when I come home from the office on Saturday, I hardly get a hello. Paula generally wants to do something after driving the kids to the practice and the games. And I'll never forget, 
you know, I said to Paula, you know, Ang and I are going to ski. We're just going to stop by the house to change. We walk in, and there's a huge lasagna. <laughs> Normally, it would be like no lunch, everybody doing their own thing. And the kids are all there nicely yeah, dressed, yeah. <laughs> standing in the, remember? Stand, thanks to me. Yeah, thanks to you. Standing in the kitchen, pretending it was like any other day. Hi, Dad, how was your day? <laughs> Fine, this is my friend, Ang. One of the boys' girlfriends was over, her hair all done, all dressed up. And they pretended, Ang, that it was like any, every other day, didn't they? Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. Right, you know, because yeah. Ang Lee was coming to the house. Then we, <laughs> then we left, and I'll let... I'm happy for you. What? I was I'm happy, happy for, for them. You. They enjoyed seeing you. When we came back, normally they all would have been... You know, we came back to train. You, you changed before you drove back home. And normally they all would have been out. But they're all nicely <laughs> sitting in the kitchen, remember? And the Academy Awards happened to be the next day, and I was just taking off my boots, and I remember laughing. Who's going to say it? Ask you first. And I forget who it was. One said, casually, so who do you like for the Academy Awards? Who do you like? For the, who do you think is going to win the Academy Awards? And they were dying, I'm sure, to ask you every question <laughs> under the about sun. Movies. Right, about <laughs> movies. Which, of course, I did, being your friend, as you did ask me things about being a doctor. And uh, one of the things to share with the viewers, I'll never forget, you were very honest. I said, so when did you feel, you know, you really had made it? And I'll never forget you told me, and you painted such a vivid picture of it. You were in the Gobi Desert, you told me, and you were making Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and the sun was starting to set. You only had a few takes, and you look around, and there are like thousands of extras and horses and everything. Hundreds, hundreds. Hundreds, whatever. But, I, but you painted the feeling of, of me being there. You made that desert. By the way, you, you, but with anybody that doesn't know, in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, there was a lot of new technology, wasn't there, on that film? Ah, uh, not really. The next movie, Hulk, has a lot of technology. That had but some. That, yeah. Now, but, uh, Crouching Tiger has uh, um, quite a bit low tech sort of technology back then. It's the Asian style. Well, things have changed so much, but you developed technology during that, especially, Ang, you mentioned the Hulk, Ang, you get like a little kid. I'll never forget, we're at the Y on the basketball court, and you were talking about, Ang did all, he's a perfectionist, he really is, you're really into your work. He was satisfied with nobody doing the Hulk with the blue screen, right? He's people's time you know when they and to save know. people's time and he uh, just you wanted it work. Everything yeah, tedious do, work yeah it's tedious work so who was the hulk when you look at that film who are we looking at hulk. i play the hulk let me see no. do it <laughs> make you do it uh, yeah that's the hulk that's the aim i know <laughs> ang did every movement of that film and i'll tell you that's an unbelievable film I loved it the first time I saw it. I love the Hulk and I love movies like that. But after you told me about that, and I watched it for the second time. You recognize something? Yeah, I recognized a lot uh -huh. that I hadn't seen the first time. So anybody who hasn't seen that film, go out and get it. I'm telling you, if you look at that, talk, talk to them about it like you told me about that film. Yeah, Why did I appreciate nice it? Yeah. No, not only that. There's technology in that film. Well, there are sensors. Yeah. Because the machine's very hard to, to mimic the weight and how people behave. Uh, so they put sensor all over you. We did to perform. As I edited the film, I know what exactly the movie needs. And I'm the performer. So Are you telling me too much? Yeah. I used to stop you. I used to say you're ruining it for me. Don't tell me anymore. You're ruining my willing suspension of disbelief only goes so far. You were so much into that film into the fighting. I remember we acted out one time. The Hulk at the end, up in the sky. You know how much into that, is that your favorite film? Uh, my favorite film of myself? Yes. 
I know. They're, they're like children. So I'm not allowed to have favorites. I understand. You sound like my wife. I do have my favorites. Everybody I wouldn't say so it. So much the film. I, I love him. I understand that. Yeah. Now, you won the Academy Award for a film that you were surprised that you won for. And it was, uh, yeah, you're, you're so humble you would never think you'd win the Academy Award. But at the Academy War, it wasn't so much a surprise. Um, but beforehand, but when you were making the film? When the movie hits, that's a surprise, yeah. It must have been an unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this man is being very humble. He's won at the Cannes Film Festival. Uh, he's won all awards all over Europe, all over the world. Anybody in the industry, you mention your name, you're like... So. Well, a lot of people, Ang, you really are modest. You really are. And you live modestly. And that's why probably you're so creative. You've never gotten affected by Hollywood. You're not affected by yourself. You've never once bragged a lot at saying this on camera. I'm just being nice. No, he's not. you're not affected at all by Hollywood. Ang is just like a regular person. You've probably been in my office 20 times. Nobody has ever noticed you. You sit there like everybody else, uh, the staff probably go, is, goes wild. I think everybody's asked to take a picture with you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Autographs, pictures, everything. She's just a little nicer to me than everybody else. But a little nice. Oh, my God. They goo 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 eyed when you walk in. They goo goo eyed when you walk in. He really is a modest guy. He really is. You would never know the accomplishments he's made. And it really is an honor having you on this show. It really is. And I thank you for doing it. I know it's a pain in the neck for you. And I know you don't like doing interviews. I mean that, Ang. But uh, That's all right. uh, it, it, you're doing I like it for a... like movie more. Yeah, hang out is See, good. you may yeah. switch yeah. careers and you may start doing these independent films donate, again. Donate, right. donate, all, bring all your toys. <laughs> bring all your toys. Bring to, all your toys. Bring all your toys to Ang. Ang is a child at heart and loves toys. Loves toys <laughs> Any Hulk memorabilia. Have sentimental uh, uh, values. Right. Just, just give it to him. We'll take any memorabilia from old movies. The Hulk, Crouching Tiger. Ang loves to play with toys. This man loves toys. Give him toys. You can drop them off at my office Monday through Friday, Saturday morning. And please, we really need the toys. I have told you, Ang, it's like, it's like riot it's control. Like, yeah. It's a zoo, like 3,000 kids. And I pile them up with toys at, uh, at the holiday season. So the only way to get all those toys, 3,000 toys, is to bring them to the office, please. I hate to beg, but the kids are dependent on it. Also, anybody, and you know, with the economy and everything, and everybody thinks in Westchester, everybody's affluent, and you know that everybody is That's not. That. No. Yeah. There are a lot of people who, like, are down, uh, down and out for time, lost their insurance, and St. Rita's, you're treated like a human being. All the volunteers are nice. It's free medical care every Friday evening, 5.30, See it at the beginning, at the end of the film for the location, or call Nancy at my office, 381-2091. Nancy, you know, is the jack of all trades. She's That's sitting like, behind she's the camera right, right now. And here, <laughs> and here we Nancy. just got finished showing me all the animation on the computers and the guys working for your next film, okay? You've got guys all over the place. Everybody's doing things for these films, and you've got poor Nancy filming us. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, all right? This is high tech. You just want to make my show look bad. We're in competition now for this. First it was swimming, then it was skiing. Now it's television. Come on, you won the Academy Award. Give me a break. <laughs> there was a couple of things I wanted to, first of all, uh, we share the fact that you grew up Christian, so you know what this clinic is all about. Uh, our values are very similar. They really are. You're, you're, you're a decent man with good honors. I'll never forget, we were in an argument once, and you turned to me and said, Kevin, it's called conscience. And I, 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 I wasn't saying it wasn't, eh? but I remember respecting you and thinking, you're a moral, decent man 
and like everybody else, and you do it with your that's movie. Right. Yeah. Like well, everybody. That's like everybody. Right. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, not, that's right. uh, you know, not, yeah. he would never brag about himself or anything. It, uh, his, his movies have been wonderful, uh, Taking Back Woodstock, uh, Life of Pi, uh, Sense and Sensibility, by the way, was a great movie. You've given, Ang has given me a lot of his old movies. I had never seen that. That's, that's a terrific movie. Uh, some of the early movies, you, the Western stuff, you love horses. Little does anybody know that this guy is enthralled no, no, with no, horses. Right. No, I'm too busy on the movie set. I didn't really get a chance. No, but to you, have a, you have a love for that animal. Mongolian horses, you know, all different breeds. Yeah, they're I, lovely animals. I, 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 with Brokeback Mountain, for example, with Ang, it's more getting into the West and the horses and that lifestyle. And I remember us talking about that. And you have a, you have a real respect and a love for a simple life like that and in like in a lot of your films. Well, sometimes. Which is like yeah, your yeah, life is. Yeah, yeah. You really, yeah. li you would never know you're Ang Lee. I can't believe I'm sitting here Stop with that. the Stop. Ang Lee. My God, I, I, I'm like seeing stars. I, can't. <laughs> I kid Ang all the time. Uh, he's got a good sense of humor. We gotta fill up the time, Ang. We have to fill up uh, half an hour. Nancy's not putting up her hand anytime soon. I wish you would, Nancy. Uh, I don't know, I'm running out of things to say. Uh, wait, wait, let me look. I made some little notes. Uh, I think I talked about everything. Your father was a high school principal, okay? That was tough, someday we'll talk about that and I, in your own school. I don't know how the hell you got through that. I would have switched schools. Why, why didn't you? Why didn't you switch schools? If my father was my high school principal, I would have switched schools. No, because he he moved around. Uh, Wasn't it an advantage? Uh, no, I don't particularly get moving. I was uh, always but called into. Your father, he's a high school principal. That that's that's. Uh, yeah. yeah, but in high school, I was always being called into the principal's office. <laughs> Were you? Or did you get it at home? No, 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 no. I get it at home. You got it at home, he would. <laughs> Oh, and what else am I going to talk about? The clinic. We can talk about the clinic. Uh, it's Friday nights. Uh, we subsist on community donations. None of us get paid at the clinic. Uh, myself, none of the volunteers. The volunteers are all nurses from neighboring schools, lay people who do a lot of work. We give shots. We give all vaccinations, childhood physicals for free, we give job physicals, we do EKGs, uh, we give antibiotics when you're sick, everything is completely free. It's in Lower Westchester, uh, not far from my office, which is in the Maronick. Again, at the end of the film, you'll see the location of the clinic. We need and want patients there, that's why we do it. The reward at, at the clinic is just seeing the smiles on, on people being satisfied and getting taken care of for free. For me, it reminds me, I've told you why I become a doctor. When I don't have to deal with all the paperwork and the hassles, of, you know, to get a, you know what it's like to get a medication. I've got to call every company and uh, everybody's plan is everything is different or to get a CAT scan on somebody. I've got to get permission from the insurance company. When I'm at St. Rita's, it just, it's, I'm taking care of people, which is why I became a doctor. And you and I are similar because we love our work. We're lucky, really, we have the luxury of, of, of loving our work. That's something else we share in common. Uh, it's uh, borderline with us, though. Sometimes we get a little obsessive compulsive about our work, which is good, but sometimes our families complain. My hobby, remember my hobby a, couple, a few years ago? Well, you called, you defended me to Paul and my wife. You called uh, it his trees. Those right. Trees. I think I planted like 650 trees that I pulled out, yeah. a little crazy, out of the forest. However, there are a lot of trees dying on my property. And speaking of ecology, for every tree that dies, you're supposed to plant a tree. It it's, looks like there's about 650 trees dying from those old horses I have growing through the trees and breaking the branches. So thank you for defending me on that with my family when my wife was telling me he's nuts, he's out. You called me one day, you said, that's his hobby, Paula. So, <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. Nancy, are you going to give me any idea of how much time 
we've been on. Uh, I thank Ang. Ang is off to shoot on location and took the time out. Uh, you've been a good friend. You really are, and I can always depend on you uh, as a friend. And I thank you. Uh, he look, does he look good f enough for me to... I should have had them put makeup on you, so I look like a really good doctor. That you, <laughs> you look good and healthy. The two of us with this lighting, that's another thing. I'm in Ang Lee's studio, and I've got a couple of table lamps. <laughs> Explain that. <laughs> I got producer said, every penny goes to the screen. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. If we don't see it, we don't spend our money. Yeah. I think it's competition. Think and yeah. we've worked out together. We've skied together. You're very competitive. You don't want this film looking good. Admit it. Yeah. yeah. Come on. It has you to be a great movie. You don't want me winning any awards for St. Rita's <laughs> Free Medical Clinic Films, do you? <laughs> with, with that. I gotta say good night to everybody and thank you, Wang, for being with us. I really appreciate it. And everybody remember the clinic and come to the clinic. It's free medical care. See you all soon. Thank you, thank you, Nancy. Hi, this is Dr. Kevin Maloney again for St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic. Uh, let me start by telling you for the, those of you who don't know, I have a free medical clinic every Friday evenings at 5.30. Anybody can come, anybody can be seen for free. You can look at the beginning and the end of this film for the location. I'm going to say it again. The reason why we don't say the location on film is because we occasionally change locations and then we have to redo films. And they're not easy to do. And I honestly don't like doing these films. And the only reason I do the films is everybody wants to see who they're going to see at this clinic. and. It's a way of, of telling people where the clinic is and also of us collecting food for the clinic people, used toys. Uh, what else? <laughs> it's food, used toys. We're a little bit tired. We're a little bit tired because Nancy here, if you notice, who is on all of these films, has a bit of a swelled head today. Okay, I think that she's getting a little bit carried away with herself because last night we filmed the famous Ang Lee, who won the Academy, by the way, I didn't mention for Ang's sake, he won the Academy Award. You all see the Ang Lee show. If you want, you can request it. Uh, he won the Academy Award for Best Director for Brokeback Mountain, and he won the Academy Award for Best Film for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I think he was nominated like 50 times for Academy Awards. He's, and I didn't say this, Ang. Uh, while, while Ang is a friend of mine, while we were doing the interview, Ang has won at every film festival all over the world. The reason Ang has a great sense of humor, you should watch that show. He's a really funny guy, really down to earth. And I thank Ang Lee again for, for contributing to St. Rita's Free um, Medical Center and also his wife, Jane. Uh, the, who, uh, when I first met, goes, can I do a documentary on you? No, Jane. I can't believe I'm actually doing these films and a little bit got comfortable with these films because it's just in the office and us holding the camera and Loretta, one of the clinic volunteers, is filming us now. But uh, thank you guys uh, for helping out with the clinic. And I thank everybody watching for helping out with the clinic because we subsist on community donations, which is another reason why we do these films. Nancy's just beaming after filming Ang Lee. She doesn't even want to say a word. You can send your donations to my office at 144 East Boston Post Road, care of Sister Therese. All donations are tax deductible. None of us get paid for our services except Nancy with, with, with just overwhelming adulation from Mang Lee. My God, she's just happy sitting here smiling. <laughs> All donations are tax deductible. We buy medications and supplies, and that's how we survive and are able to give free medical care. Uh, we want patients come to the clinic if you don't have insurance. Everybody is welcome. We give free antibiotics, vaccinations, physicals, you name it, everything. Everybody knows that uh, we have a holiday party that's grown to tremendous proportions, and I literally give out to two, 3,000 children. 
every year, and it's through your support, everybody watching, bringing toys to my office, that I've been able to supply these kids with toys every single year. Uh, please bring the toys to the office. The office is just north of Marinick Avenue, across from the Boston Post Road. Uh, Nancy, uh, if she's not thinking about her future career in film with Ang Lee, will be glad to take a toy from you. Uh, she'll give you a receipt, the tax deductible. We have to collect them all year round to be able to supply children, two, 3,000 children, with toys. Again, it's all about a free medical clinic, though. And uh, it's, it's not about me doing it. It's all about my volunteers. Uh, they arrive there very early. They leave much later than me. I do very little. I show up. In fact, when I did the film with Ang Lee, and Ang and I had talked about that privately together, you know, he, he tells a story when, when his son was little. He goes, Dad, how come everybody else is working and you're not? He arrives, sits in the director's chair, and, and says, shoot. St. Rita's is sort of like that. I arrive. Everything is waiting for me. The patients are all registered. The nurses are all waiting to give shots and draw blood. I see the patients give the orders. I leave. Everybody's still there, and everybody tears the place down. We're like a mesh unit. So I give my volunteers all the credit, not me, for doing this. I have really have the easiest job, except for doing these films, which I hate. But I have to do them uh, to let people know who I am, I'm a, a family practitioner. I see children and adults. Just like in my office, I do the same thing at the free medical clinic. So please use the services. Anybody that can't afford to go and pay for a doctor's visit or a physical, come and we, we'll take care of you there. And everybody seems to leave very happy. My volunteers are wonderful. I have school nurses uh, who, who give the vaccinations who draw the blood, I have phlebotomists, I have members of the community that volunteer their time registering, entertaining the children, uh, giving out toys, food, clothing when we have them. Throughout the year, they can be dropped off at my office too. So please come utilize the free clinic, that's why we do it. But again, I wanna give all the credit to my volunteers because they do more work than I do. They're, they're very early, dragging chairs out of a closet, setting up tables, we're in an empty room, everything is stored away. When I leave and they're finished drawing the bloods and giving the shots, they put all the stuff away. So really, you know, I thank my volunteers. They're the ones really providing the free medical care. Uh, and I couldn't do it without them. I have the easiest job there is. Uh, again, look at the beginning and the end of the film for the location. And uh, please come and utilize the service. It's every Friday evening at 5.30. If you want more information about it, call my office at 381-2091 and ask to speak to Nancy to find out more about the clinic, where it is, how you can volunteer, and try to get her stop talking about it. I just filmed Ang Lee, and I directed a whole thing with Ang Lee, and I, that's all she's been talking about all day. Are you ever going to start talking about anything else, Nancy? Nope. nope. It's no. Hang Lee. See, that's it. It's Hang Lee. She, she plans on a big, big career in the industry. Hang, she'll be, talk about, uh, what do they call it, people, stalkers. Hang, if you see Nancy's number, hang up, trust me. With that, I'm going to turn over the mic to Nancy, and hopefully she can talk about something else other than being the big movie director at Hang Lee's studio last night. <laughs> Uh, we're tired. It was very late. Ang, Ang, I thank you if you're watching again because you you had your whole crew and studio stop for us uh, as you're all about on quick notice to leave uh, for location for your present film that you're doing, and that was that was great of you. Uh, you've been a good friend to me, and you've been a good friend to St. Rita's, as are the rest of you people out there. My patience, you've been great. I couldn't have do this without you. You've all supported St. Rita's through the years. Uh, you've all brought in toys through the years. I ask you to continue to do so. If you want to come to the Christmas party and see where, where your toys are going to, you're welcome to. For those of you watching, every year the date changes 
of the Christmas party, and we're going to post that at the end too. On the outside of my office from now on, we're going to have a poster around the holiday season where you guys watching who want to come to the Christmas party can see where it's being given. So please look at that poster, Nancy. She does more work than anybody, uh, not only with my practice, as all of my patients know. She doesn't let a test result go by or, or you know, set up a test fastidiously or a follow-up on everybody. Beyond, besides running my office as my office manager, she's the head of, the, of St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic and coordinates everything from the volunteers to setting up and, and organizing medications, vaccinations, et cetera. Uh, and I can't thank you enough, Nancy. You really have been spectacular, and you deserve a lot of credit for what you do. She's being polite. She's still thinking about Ang Lane. <laughs> Let's see, she's usually talking a lot more. She's hardly saying a word. I always forget to thank the French American School on all these films. You guys have been great and given me the space for the Christmas party for years, and I thank you guys and all my patients who work for the French American School and who are teachers there and their children go there. I thank you. As always, the police, the fire departments, all the schools in the area, all the churches, I thank you for supporting St. Rita's, uh, and I ask you to continue to do so. With that, I'm going to sign off, and Nancy's going to sign on. Thank you. Hi, this is Dr. Kevin Maloney for St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic. I'm here with a friend of mine, Wayne Pollock, who's a teacher in our community, and we're here to tell you about St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic. Uh, it's a free clinic open to anybody that doesn't have insurance uh, or who just has the need to see a doctor and not have to pay anything. Uh, we meet every Friday evenings at 5.30. For the location of the clinic, please see the beginning of this film and the end of the film. Or you can call the office, my office, at 381-2091, and we'd be glad to tell you. Uh, at the clinic, we see everything that you would uh, normally go to your regular doctor's office for. We give free antibiotics. Uh, we do blood testing. All of this is free. Uh, we subsist on community donations. For any of you watching, you've done it in the past. You can send a tax-deductible donation uh, to my office care of Sister Therese, T-E-R-E-S-E, -E -E, 144 East Boston Post Road. Uh, that's the way we buy the medications, the supplies, etc. Also, with the money that the community donates, we buy toys because we give a party every year in December, a holiday party where Wayne was just telling me this year was his first year and you were shocked, right? I could not believe the number of people that were there. It, it, was, it was incredible. There are thousands of children. Wayne said he estimated probably about 3,000 children that we give toys to. Uh, it has grown to tremendous proportions, so we have to collect the toys throughout the year. The way we collect them is through all of you generous people who have, when you've been out shopping, picked up a toy and dropped it off at my office. Please continue to do the same. Uh, to You can imagine to supply toys to 3,000 children, we can't just collect them in a month's time. So you can drop them off at my office, which is across from Brewer's Hardware Store on the Boston Post Road. As Nancy's panning, Nancy is our filmer, the director of the clinic. There's Brewer's Hardware Store, which you all know, right north of the harbor on the Maronick Avenue. And the office is right across the street. My name is on the awning, Kevin Maloney. Please come in with a toy six days a week, Monday through Friday and Saturday morning. And Nancy would be glad to take them from you. And also she would give you a slip for a tax deduction. Everything is tax deductible. None of us get paid for our services. Uh, we're a completely not-for-profit organization. No volunteer gets paid. Uh, speaking of volunteers, if you'd like to volunteer, and after we cut Wayne, we'll, uh, we'll tell you more about that, please just come by, come by the office, speak to Nancy or myself, and we'd be glad to tell you uh, what you can do. You don't have to be medically trained. There are tons of jobs. Uh, and it's a very rewarding experience just to treat people in need. 
and the reward is really seeing their faces and their smiles. Absolutely. It really is, and it gives you a good feeling. I thank you, Wayne, for devoting your Friday nights, really. It's not easy to give up a Friday night and to come and work, uh, and, and you've done a wonderful job of it, and I couldn't be doing it without you and all the other volunteers. Well, thank uh, you, Ken. It's my pleasure. Thank you. At our St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic, once again, we're outside Dr. Maloney's office across the street here, 144 East Boston Post Road in Mamaroneck, just north of Mamaroneck Avenue, across the street from Brewer's Hardware, which is right here, the harbor, the boat yard. Kyle's doing a little scan for you, showing you where we are. Uh, okay. Um, why are we here? Well, we're here because Dr. Maloney is the director and, uh, I'm sorry, the doctor who runs St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic. He's been doing this now for over 20 years. Did you realize that? I had no idea it was 20 years, Nancy. This is the 20th anniversary year of St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic. Dr. Maloney's been giving back to the community all these many years. Um, he does things from the bottom of his heart. Anyone who knows him is a patient of his, is a friend of his, uh, knows him in any way, knows that that's what his life is all about, and that's caring for people, caring for their health and their needs. And we're here to talk to you about St. Rita's Free Clinic, which is his give back um, endeavor. Um, I have Wayne Pollock here. Wayne is a volunteer at St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic. We're going to talk to you about a lot of things tonight, but Wayne, I think we'll start with the volunteer experience. Uh, you've been a volunteer at the clinic for a while now. Tell me what started you. What got you started as a volunteer? Well, I've known Dr. Maloney for a long time. I've been a patient and, and a friend of his, uh, and I've known about the clinic. Uh, I've always admired the work that he's done uh, to, the, to the community, for the community. And uh, last summer, I learned that there was, um, you know, openings for volunteers, and I was very interested, and uh, I've been very, very happy to be a part of it for the last, for about the last 12 months. Okay, you know, we, we, you did say that, that there's a, a need for volunteers. Even though this has been going on 20 years, we do have quite a group of people who have been with us all the way through. Um, Dr. Maloney being the one who's there every single week, but uh, many of the volunteers have been with us all the way through the 20 years. Um, but we do accept newbies, and we certainly need newbies, as I, I use that word loosely. We need volunteers at all the time and at all different levels. Wayne, do you have a medical background? I'm not a doctor. Uh, I have a, I'm a CPR instructor with the Red Cross, and I have first aid training. Uh, I'm certainly not a doctor, but I enjoy working with people and, and helping people. And uh, uh, actually, I usually work on the registrations, uh, although I've done other things. And it's, um, as you said, Nancy, there's a need for, you know, many, many different volunteers to work behind the scenes and do many different things. And, uh, you know, I like to feel that I'm, you know, bringing something that, um, you know, is, is helpful to people. And you do a great job at it, Wayne. Thank you. Here at St. Rita's. Rita's. Um, you can call the office, 381-2091. I'm there a lot. You can call uh, anytime. Uh, preferably if you call after 6 when we're finished with patients, I can give you a little more time. But if you just want a quick synopsis of what it's like to be a volunteer, how you can volunteer your services, any kind of expertise you have is greatly appreciated. Uh, we need clerical help. We need... Uh, Spanish translators. We have quite a bit of uh, Spanish population and not everyone there speaks Spanish so we could use some help with that. We have uh, forms that come in from uh, Latin American countries that we're not real familiar with. We could use translators for that. We need help with uh, phlebotomy. There's always a need for phlebotomist and for those of you don't, who don't know that word, that's the people who draw the blood. Um, you need to be certified in phlebotomy. You need to bring your certification with you, but if you have that, we'd be glad to have you as a volunteer. Um, other kinds of behind the scenes things that you can't imagine. This is our major way of raising funds. Um, St. Rita's is a not-for-profit organization. We uh, subsist on donations from the community. and. Um, in order to do that, we have to get the word out. How do we do this? What is St. Rita's all about? How does it run? Uh, what kind of donations can you make? And we do that by making these films. I have a wonderful volunteer behind the camera tonight. His name is Kyle Cristofalo. Uh, hi, Kyle. Um, 
If you know anything about uh, doing videos, please come and volunteer. We could always, Kyle's been wonderful the past couple of days, but we could always use people to help us make films. If you have any experience in editing, the LMC TV studio is available for editing, and uh, they also have classes in that if you'd like to volunteer in that capacity. Um, how, how else? Fundraising. Uh, there's a tremendously huge Christmas party, which we'll get to in a little while. Um, and as I said, we need cash donations to buy equipment, medicine, supplies, and when we're low, toys for the Christmas party. So um, if you're looking for an organization that could really use your donations, St. Rita's should be at the top of your list. All of the volunteers and Dr. Maloney himself are paid absolutely nothing um, for their work at St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic. It is truly a free medical clinic. It runs entirely on, on, on donations. And you as the community, we're asking once again for your support. You've been wonderful in the past. Um, if you're looking um, for a charitable organization to make a donation to, St. Rita's should be high on your list. Uh, Dr. Maloney, as I said, has been doing this for 20 years now. I can't believe it myself. I've been with him all that time. And uh, it's just a super way to give back something to your own community. Um, we can't do it without your support. There's equipment to buy, medications to buy, and uh, supplies and so forth. Uh, we don't get donations of those kinds of things, and we do need them to run the clinic. Um, any money you can give us is greatly appreciated. You can make your checks out to St. Rita's Free Clinic, care of Sister Therese. Mail it to 144 East Boston Post Road, Mamaroneck, 10543. Or you can drop it off anytime you want. Um, it is a non-for-profit, or I keep saying that, not-for-profit organization, and it is tax-deductible. We'll be glad to give you a receipt for your donations, um, and please help us out any way you can. Um, it's the only way the clinic can survive and continue to subsist, and we really need your support. Um, I know it seems like we're begging all the time. We try to make this as... as non-intrusive as possible but we do need your support. We're always begging on films and I'm just gonna ask you one more time it's a great volunteer opportunity we all get back much more than we receive we all receive much more than we give and um, there's a lot of opportunities for anything that's uh, you feel that you can give to us please come on by we could always use your help uh, we accept gently used toys, clothing, and uh, non-perishable foods to distribute to the needy in the community. So any uh, items you have like that, please stop by the office. Um, and we certainly need your monetary support. Once again, St. Rita's charges nothing as a fee to the patients who come to it. So if you need the services, please come. None of the volunteers receives pay in any form whatsoever. So uh, everything we do at the clinic is totally relied upon on the donations of the community. Um, we need to buy medical equipment, EKGs, blood pressure cuffs, medications, etc. Um, and we need to buy toys when we don't get enough for the holiday party. So we rely on you, our great friends in the community. Uh, please make out your checks care, uh, payable to St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic, care of Sister Therese. Mail them to 144 East Boston Post Road, Mamaroneck 10543. And uh, if you need to drop them off, I'd be glad to give you a receipt on the spot if you need to do that. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to call the office, 3812091. And due to the change of locations um, throughout the years, we're not mentioning where the clinic is at this time, but they will be in the credits at the beginning, the beginning and end of this film. So please check that out. And again, if you have questions, feel free to call the office. Um, I'm losing my voice now, so it's time to cut off. Wayne, thank you once again. Thank you, Nancy. And uh, with that, this is Nancy Finnell, your roving reporter for St. Rita's Free Medical Clinic. Good night, and please help. <laughs>